Here are a few kids who decided to turn into scammers. Number eight, Charles Turner. When he was 19 years old, Charles Turner was booked into a Georgia jail after attempting to trick state tax collectors on multiple occasions. According to police, he tried to get them to send him a massive tax refund. And this wasn't an amateur effort. The chief investigator for the Georgia Department of Revenue told the news that he was impressed by the teen scheme. When the cops compliment your scamming abilities, you might be a natural born criminal mastermind. That being said, he wasn't good enough to get away with it. Turner was arrested at his mom's house in suburban Atlanta. Yes, he ran his entire operation out of his mom's basement. Turner had recently graduated from high school and decided to become a full-time scammer instead of doing something boring like going to college or getting an actual job. Turner did very well in school and people who knew him said he was pretty intelligent. His decisions, however, were less than brilliant. Turner set up a couple of fake online businesses that supposedly sold electronics. But instead of delivering anything, he just used his customer's bank account information and routing numbers. Turner then dramatically overpaid his taxes by almost a million dollars with the stolen money, hoping that the State Department of Revenue would pay him a huge refund. Unfortunately for Turner, there are systems to catch this scam and he never got any money. Turner attempted to overpay the government $25 million, hoping they would send him a $25 million refund. You've got to give him credit. Laundering money through the IRS is a pretty bold strategy. Number seven, Yusef Selassie. Yusef Selassie was charged with first degree grand larceny, identity theft, and many other crimes by the Manhattan Supreme Court. So what did he actually do to get hit with all that? Youssef ran a highly lucrative scheme with nothing more than his iPhone and a laptop. The unemployed teenager ran what's known as a SIM swapping scam. It's a scam where the victim's phone number is transferred to the thief's phone. Then the scammer can make or receive calls and texts as their victim. They can also change the password, locking the original owner out of their own device. As you can imagine, once you have control over someone's phone like that, there's a lot of illegal things you can do. Youssef certainly got around, managing to scam 75 people in 20 different states. But he didn't target people randomly. He only targeted certain people in certain industries that he thought would likely have cryptocurrency. He would then steal that cryptocurrency for himself, sell it on the internet for real money, and buy whatever he wanted. He ended up stealing about a million dollars worth of crypto. Youssef had pretty expensive tastes. When the cops searched his place in California, they discovered that he spent his stolen money in rather extravagant ways. He had two Rolex watches, a monogrammed Gucci wallet, a diamond ring, a diamond and sapphire ring, and six other rings with other jewels. So he may not have gotten away with his scamming in the end, but at least he got arrested in style. Number six, Canadian crypto. Youssef got away with a lot, but his operation was small time compared to one teenager from Ontario, Canada. This teenager, whose name isn't known due to Canadian reporting laws, allegedly stole $46 million worth of crypto from a single person. As evidenced by the fact that it has two entries so far on this list, the world of crypto has been the go-to destination for scammers in recent years. The arrest was made as part of a joint investigation with Canadian authorities and the FBI since the victim was American. Like Yusuf, this teen used SIM swapping to steal all the crypto. So how did they catch this kid? The joint investigation discovered that he used the stolen crypto to buy a rare username for a video game. Sadly, the police didn't say what game it was in the report since that would be an identifying detail. But it's still pretty funny that he was caught because he was spending money on a username he wanted. This transaction led the investigator straight to him. The true age of this scammer is unknown. The Youth Criminal Justice Act in Canada means that the police in Canada won't tell the press how old this person is. However, that does tell us that they're a minor, perhaps only 14 years old. There are definitely some pretty tech-savvy 14-year-olds out there. The investigators for the case said that this is the largest crypto scam involving a single person in Canadian history. Pretty impressive for someone who's probably in high school. And rather silly that they would risk getting caught over a gaming username. Hopefully, it was the perfect username. Number 5. Graham Clark Graham Clark also wanted to run a big crypto scam but he wanted to get more creative than a simple SIM swap. Along with a few other scammers, he hacked into several high-profile Twitter accounts. 
They did this by targeting Twitter employees with phone and email scams to steal their credentials. Once they had what they needed from the Twitter employees, they went big. They hacked into 130 Twitter accounts. And we're not just talking about any Twitter accounts. They took over and tweeted from accounts owned by Apple, Uber, Coinbase, Jeff Bezos, Barack Obama, Elon Musk, Kanye, Bill Gates, and Joe Biden. They had all of these accounts tweet out some variation of send Bitcoin to this wallet and you will be sent even more Bitcoin back. People reading these tweets fell for it and sent Bitcoin to the addresses that the companies and celebrities were supposedly posting. Really? Nobody questioned why Joe Biden was asking for Bitcoin? After running the Bitcoin scam, Clark sold the login information to double his money and kill two birds with one scam. See what we did there? In the end, Clark ended up with three years in prison after stealing $120,000 worth of Bitcoin. Maybe he would have been better off sticking with the tried and true SIM swap scam instead of trying to get creative with it. Thankfully, the crypto he stole was returned to its rightful owners. Number four, Davian Daryl Mitchell. Davian Daryl Mitchell ran one of the oldest scams in the book. But unlike these lazy teenagers doing everything on their phones with crypto, he actually had to put in some effort for this scam. Mitchell sold candy to people, telling them it was to raise money for his football team. But it was actually just to raise money for himself. Mitchell ran his scam at upscale restaurants, since he knew anyone eating there would have money. No point in targeting broke people at McDonald's, after all. Mitchell would bring three kids with him to look more legitimate. He was 19, but he looked like he could be older. So the kids convinced people that there really was a school football team. Michael's problem was that it became a little bit too greedy. He kept going back to the same restaurants and eventually a manager got annoyed. One restaurant finally called the cops after growing increasingly annoyed. After all, Mitchell was selling food to their customers. That's their job. The manager told the cops that he had asked Mitchell to leave before and Mitchell threatened to fight him. Threatening to fight restaurant managers is not the best way to ensure that your scam flies under the radar. Cops found out that Mitchell did not have a permit to solicit in the city, which was pretty obvious. Mitchell only had a few hundred dollars on him when he was given two misdemeanor citations for contributing to the delinquency of a minor and solicitation without a permit. The police called the parents, who didn't care that much. They even asked the cops to leave the kids with Mitchell and let him drive them home. Not exactly the most responsible parenting. After the cops left, Mitchell and the kids went straight to another restaurant and tried their scam again. They, of course, were arrested again. Guess some people are just born to scam. Number three, Kevin Perry. Kevin Perry ended up serving a three-year prison sentence for an operation a little more elaborate than selling candy to rich folks. No, this teen was running a full-on Ponzi scheme. Perry told investigators that he was investing their money into the foreign currency market. In reality, he was taking that money and buying whatever he wanted. He would also give some of it back to investors to keep the scam alive and attract new investors. He'd take their money, and give it to the next one, and so on. It works great until people catch on. One of his clients filed a civil complaint, but Perry ignored it and continued his Ponzi scheme as planned. He kept right on pitching his scheme to new investors, thinking that the complaint wouldn't go anywhere. He was wrong. Perry ended up picking up a new investor who was actually an undercover FBI agent. He told the agent that he could turn his $10,000 into $25,000. The agent responded with, you're under arrest. Before its collapse, Perry earned over $400,000 through his scam. Foreign exchange, or Forex, is one of the biggest financial markets in the world. It has a staggering daily trading value of about $6.6 .6 trillion. These crazy numbers, combined with the speed of the market, make Forex trading very attractive to potential scammers who can promise their targets huge returns without any downside. Number two, the bling ring. The Bling Ring may be the most popular gang of teenage scammers in history. They even got their own movie. They were also known as the Hollywood Hills Burglar Bunch, but that's not quite as catchy as the Bling Ring now, is it? They were a group of seven teenagers who all lived in or around Calabasas, one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in California. The Kardashians, for instance, lived there. For about a year, these teenagers stole $3 million in cash and belongings from the house of the Hollywood elite. The biggest scores came from Paris Hilton, whose house they broke into five different times. On one occasion, they made off with $2 million worth of her belongings. Other high-profile victims of their crime spree included Orlando Bloom, Lindsay Lohan, and Megan Fox. Check out our in-depth video on the bling ring to learn more about Hollywood's teenage criminal masterminds by clicking here. Number one, Trey Brown. Trey Brown only worked out of Kroger in Georgia for two weeks, but they were the most lucrative two weeks of his life. He scammed them out of almost $1 million during his short stint at the grocery store. The 19-year-old made a lot more than minimum wage, well, until he got caught anyway. 
Brown went beyond just taking cash out of the register, since there was only so much you could make lifting 20s. He created a ton of fake returns for items that weren't actually existing and put them on credit cards. The returns ranged wildly in price, anywhere from 75 bucks to $87,000. Maybe he thought that he would go under the radar by faking small returns as well. He bought multiple cars, clothes, shoes, and guns with his stolen money. Brown was living it up until the store caught on to the scam. Kroger Corporate noticed what was happening and quickly called the cops. Brown had allegedly totaled one of the cars he bought with the money, but the rest was returned to Kroger. Click here to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comments section who was the worst scammer on this list.